Good afternoon, everybody. Um, get ready to start this uh, project going over um, deploying cloud functions uh, so that you can have better control and more in depth control over how your app operates on the back end. There's quite a few things that you can do with cloud functions, and so I think it's a topic worth diving into. Uh, I will preface by saying that if you are new to Flutterflow and or Firebase, or if you have very limited knowledge or no knowledge of coding, uh, particularly using command line, uh, then you probably don't want to start with this tutorial series. Um, likely would want to uh, take a look at uh, some of my primary Flutterflow tutorials and uh, Firebase and familiarize yourself with um, the user interfaces there before diving into cloud functions because it, it can be a little confusing if you're not used to this type of uh, interface. Um, otherwise, um, we can definitely get started here. Uh, in this first tutorial, I will be outlining what, uh, what you need to do to get set up. Um, there's a few steps that we need to take before you can start um writing or copying pasting uh cloud functions into your index file and deploying them to your uh, firebase project um so <clears throat> a couple of ways that you can uh utilize uh, what is the firebase tools uh instance uh, in the command line um, you can use node.js if you're familiar with it or comfortable or just want to learn it um, or you can use the Firebase Tools uh, standalone binary, which um, still uses command line, but it uh, doesn't, doesn't run directly from Node.js. So uh, just a couple, two different ways to do that. But for this tutorial, we will be using Node. Um, we will not be using the standalone binary uh, because I want to, uh, I want to, kind of use the I guess the more technical side of things to uh, to deploy this so um, very first thing that you want to do is go to, go to uh, nodejs.org bring you to this home page I'm on Windows uh, it should detect what system you're using whether it's Windows Mac OS or Linux if it does not you can go up here to downloads and select it manually um, but uh, it should should detect it for you. And the one we're going to use is this 18.16.0. Um, this is the current latest version of Node, but uh, it's probably not quite stable yet. Um, and so there may be some issues encountered with it. So we're going to use a stable version. So go ahead and just uh, left click on it and that'll start the download um, of that. Uh, application and once that download completes then we'll uh we'll go ahead and get it installed <clears throat> and just give it a second to finish downloading here okay um so now i'll just left click on it to start the install and drag this over here i can't make this box any bigger so hopefully you can see this but it is just a standard setup install so I'll cl click the uh, next button, accept the terms of service next. I'm going to leave that uh, directory the way it is. Uh, I do want to install the NPM package. I'm just going to highlight that, click next. Um, and I'm not going to install these additional tools because I will not need them for what I'm doing. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to install that stuff, but it's not necessary right now. And click next and then tap install. And I'll just take a couple of seconds here to run the install <clears throat> okay so that's done so tap finish I'm gonna go there so now um, if you're using Windows and obviously this is different depending on what you're on but again I'm, I'm doing this from Windows so that's what we're gonna cover I'm gonna go um, to my uh, my programs and I'm going to open command prompt and just drag this over here and try and make it a little bit bigger here if I can okay so 
Hopefully you can see that. All right, uh, so the first thing I want to do is just make sure that Node.js installed correctly and it's the correct version. So I'm just going to type Node-V uh, for version. And that is the correct version, so we're good there. And I'm also going to check and make sure that npm installed and it's the correct, correct version as well. So npm-v. All right, so those two things are correct, so we're good to go there. <clears throat> so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the Firebase tools. Um, when I do this, we may encounter an error where it says I don't have the uh, correct permission set to uh, install that. If that happens, then I'll, I'll show you what we need to do to resolve that issue. So to install this, I'm going to do npm install uh, dash g firebase dash tools. And <clears throat> there are spaces in between each of the words there. All right, and then enter. Oops, I need to come back over here, enter. Well, come on now. There we go. I don't know why that wasn't taking it. Okay, so it is, it's throwing all these errors here, so stating that um, you know, it's possible that the file's already in use, which I know it's not, um, or that I may lack the permissions to access it. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm actually gonna go directly to the file uh, on my system, uh, the node.js file, and just go ahead and grant it all the permissions that it needs for me to be able to do this, uh, which that node.js file is located in my C drive, program files, node.js. So I would go to my file, ex file explorer, and let me uh, slide this over here real quick. All right, so I'm in my uh, C drive there, and then I'm going to go to Program Files, and I'm gonna scroll down here until I find Node.js. Uh, there it is, so Node.js, and then I'm gonna right click on it, go to Properties, uh, Security, Edit, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do full control for authenticated users on this uh, computer. <clears throat> All right, so that should uh, that should grant me the um, necessary permissions to be able to um, install that package now. So what we will do is just go ahead and uh, run that install again. So npm install sg <clears throat> firebase dash tools. So now, as you can see, the install is going through correctly um, because I corrected that permission issue. Okay, so that uh, that install has completed. So now we have the Firebase tools installed. Um, I paused the video while it, it ran that because sometimes it can take a little while to complete. Um, so now we're, we're ready to go. So the next thing that we want to do then is we actually want to make a connection to our Firebase um, using a Firebase command, which uh, by installing the Firebase tools, it allows us to begin issuing commands using um, the command word Firebase. Pretty straightforward. So uh, first thing we want to do then is we want to type Firebase login. So we want to log into our Firebase account. All right, so after you do that, it's going to pop up here. Um, and it's going to ask you if you want to allow Firebase to collect CLI and emulator suite usage and error reporting information. Totally optional. Um, it's really just so they can improve their products and things like that. I'm, I'm going to select no. So I'm going to type in and enter. And then after I do that, it's going to tell me to visit this URL on uh, this device to log into my Firebase account. It gives you the URL so you can actually uh, copy and paste if you want to. But... Um, it may also open the URL automatically into a web browser on your computer, um, uh, which it did do that for me, uh, but I actually, I don't want to use the web browser it opened in, so I'm going to close that and open it up in a different web browser. And um, then I'm just going to go to that, to that URL. 
Uh, and because of some privacy reasons here on my screen, I'm not actually going to pull it over for you to see. I'll just tell you what it says. So once you go to that URL, it's just going to tell you to choose an account uh, to continue to a Firebase C CLI. Uh, so you want to choose the um, account from this menu that is associated with your Firebase uh, where your app project is located. So uh, just go through the list. Um, and select the, the right one or select use another account if you need to. So I'm going to select the account that I need here. And when I do that, it's going to take me to another page, uh, which I can, I can actually uh, pull this over now and show it to you. Um, so this is the page it'll bring you to. Uh, Firebase CLI wants to access your Google account. Um, and then it, you know, it says what uh, permissions you're going to grant it. And if you trust it, then you tap allow. And once you do that, it will say that Firebase CLI login successful. Uh, you are logged in uh, to the Firebase command line. So you're good to go there. So you can get rid of that and close that window and then come back over here. And now we see that uh, waiting for authentication has turned into success, logged in as whatever account that you're logging in as. Um, if you <clears throat> go through that login process, you come back to your command line, and it's still just sitting there saying waiting for authentication. It's not showing success. And just tap in here and press the enter button, and it'll force it to, to go through. Sometimes it gets hung up. All right, so <clears throat> now that that's taken care of, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we are, obviously we are logged in, but we want to make sure there's no hangups or any problems here. We want to make sure that we are communicating uh, with the associated Firebase account. And the best way to do that is to run the command Firebase uh, project colon list. Okay. So as you can see, we are definitely communicating. Everything is working correctly. And this is showing a list of all the uh, projects that I have in that Firebase account. Um, so that that's that's the way we want it that's good news um so you're good to go there as long as you're seeing this list it's a good verification process all right so now that we've got that taken care of we can move on to the next phases of completing this setup which the next uh next phase is that we want to uh run another firebase command um to establish um basically a base directory that creates a firebase.json file and that file is required for deploying uh, most CLI um, related commands such as cloud functions and things like that. So you got to do this first. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it, obviously, if you're using Flutterflow and stuff like that, you can pretty much put this wherever you want to. Um, if you were developing an app from scratch locally, uh, then you'd want to store this file um, in your app project directory. Um, but I'm not doing that, obviously, and probably none of you are either. Um, I don't want to store it here, um, not, not just in that base directory there. So what I actually did was I went into my C drive, I went to users, and I went to that M-A-W-O-R, um, and I created a file in there, or I'm sorry, I created a folder in there. And I titled that folder, let me get it pulled up here real quick, there it is. I titled that folder Cloud Functions Tutorial. So that's where I'm, I'm going to um, create that uh, Firebase JSON um, and where I'm going to store my function files and everything else and deploy from. Um, so right now I'm currently in the directory users M-A-W-O-R. So I need to so switch to um, that folder that I created, that Cloud Functions Tutorial folder. And the way that you do that is you run the cd command, which is change directory. So cd space and then type in the um, title of your folder just as it is written. So cloud functions tutorial. <clears throat> and now you can see I've changed my uh, directory from just users m-a-w-o-r to um, the extension cloud functions tutorial. So now I'm in the correct folder. And I can go forward with the uh, the rest of the initialization here. So, um, 
So the next thing that I want to do then is I want to run the base Firebase initialization uh, command. So I'm going to do Firebase init, and that's going to give me my Firebase JSON. Okay. So I scroll down here a little bit. You can see now it's showing Firebase. We're about to initialize a Firebase project in this directory. And that's the directory that I'm making it in. Am I ready to proceed? Yes. Yes, I am. So I'm going to type Y and enter. All right. So now it's going to ask me which features, Firebase features, do I want to set up uh, for this directory? Um, uh, you press the space bar to select a feature. You scroll through them with your arrow keys, and then you press the enter key when you are ready to proceed. Um, so the ones that I'm going to select for this tutorial, um, I think what I want here, uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do Firestore, Functions, and Emulators. I believe that's what I want. Yeah, and we can always uh, make changes if we need to. All right, so that's what I want. So I selected those three, and now I'm going to uh, tap the Enter button to proceed. All right, so after I do that, now it's asking me to associate this project directory with a Firebase project, um, which... Uh, I would suggest you probably already have a Firebase project set up, but um, you, you want to go into your actual Firebase admin panel and create your project like you normally would when setting up Flutterflow. Uh, and now we can um, associate that project with this um, CLI here. So to do that, uh, the uh, first option that's highlighted here, use an existing project, is the one that we want. Um, so I'm just going to tap the Enter key. And it's going to give me a list of my projects here to choose from. And you just use the arrow keys up down to scroll through them until you find the one that you want. And the one I'm going to use is going to be the social media app because that's what I'm running off of for most of these tutorials. So I'd highlight it and I would press enter. Okay. Uh, now it's going to ask you to um, configure some of this stuff. You can just use the um, uh, predefined <clears throat> file that is listed here. So to do that, you just tap enter. Make sure I'm in here. Sometimes you have to tap enter twice. It won't always take it the first time. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm just going to use that as well. Standard. I'm not going to change it. All right. So I, I, Assign the files for the Firestore. I just left it as the um, uh, one that's automatically generated there. And now I'm going to go into setting up the functions, uh, which is really the primary thing that we're going to be working with here. And the first uh, thing that it's going to ask me here is what language would I like to use for my cloud functions? And I'm going to use JavaScript. Um, you can use TypeScript if you want to, but I would suggest starting with JavaScript. And so that, that's what we're going to use here. So I'm just going to leave it highlighted and tap enter. All right, um, uh, again, this is uh, uh, optional whether you want to do this or not. I am going to turn it on because it's helpful to, for catching bugs and whatnot. So I'm going to press Y and enter. I thought it was. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, and then do you want to install the dependencies with the NPN now? <clears throat> So um, again, it, it's up to you whether you want to do this right now. Um, it's okay if you don't, but uh, you'll have to run npm install um, before you're able to deploy any of your uh, functions later on. So I'm just going to go ahead and install them now and get that out of the way. So you just let this run. <clears throat> I'm going to pause it while it's doing this because this can take a few seconds here. 
Okay, so now that is complete, um, you'll see up here that we're getting some warnings right here that's stating that it's an unsupported engine and that uh, what is required is Node.js version 16 and what we currently have is the latest stable version of 18.16. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm guessing Firebase just hasn't updated some things. I don't, I don't know exactly why it's still like that. I'm just assuming they haven't up, updated some packages here. Um, but I will show you in, in a little bit how to go in and change the 16 to um, 18 so that it is compatible uh, with the Node.js version that we're using. Um, so you can just ignore that for now. All right. Uh, so we're good to go. Um, now it's going to ask me to set up my emulators. What kind of emulators do I want to use? Um, for this, I think we're going to use functions emulator and Firestore emulator, and I believe that's all we want. Um, so similarly, when selecting multiple items from a list doing this, you use your uh, arrow keys to scroll through them, and then select it by tapping the spacebar. And those are the two that I'm going to grab, uh, and then I'm going to tap enter to proceed. <clears throat> Okay, so now that I've done that, it's asking me which ports I want um, the functions emulator to run on. Which port? Uh, 5001 is its um, uh, just its standard port that it will run on. Um, you can define a different port if you want to, um, uh, which leaving it on its, um, its generic port could uh, be a bit of a security issue. Um, so it might be uh, worth looking into uh, setting it up on a, a more secure port. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're just going to leave it as the default port and just tap enter. And then it's going to ask you the same thing for the Firestore emulator and its default port is 8080, enter. <clears throat> and uh, would you like to enable the emulator UI? Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to go ahead and tap yes. Um, and again, this is, you can define a port or just let it use any available port, which is what we're going to do. So enter. And we can go ahead and download the emulators now if we would like to. Um, so I think, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and get this out of the way so we don't have to come back and deal with it later. So I'm going to do yes. And now it's going to it's gonna download these emulators. So I'm going to pause the video while it's doing this. Uh, well, never mind. That was quick. That was faster than I expected it to be. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot. Uh, I, <laughs> I switched my, uh, my Wi-Fi connectivity earlier because it was, it was downloading super slow. So I switched over to something faster. So that was actually that was pretty quick. Um, all right. So we're good to go there. Um, all right. So the Fire, uh, Firebase uh, initialization is complete now. So that's all good to go. So uh, before continuing on, we do want to go change that version number as a uh, reference right here uh, that required. Um, so we want to change the node version to 18 instead of 16. Um, so the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to use a, a code editor. And you know, there's a lot of different code editors out there, whichever one you prefer. Um, I'm just going to use Notepad++ because it's just a really simple interface here. Um, so I've got a new um, page set up on, on uh, Notepad++ and I'm going to go over to my uh, directory. Now let me back that up real quick here. <clears throat> let me pull this over. And so I'm going to go to my directory that's holding all of my files that I just imported, downloaded, and, and whatnot, and configured. So um, that's my Cloud Functions uh, tutorial. So now you can see we've got all this stuff in here. It's good to go. Um, I'm going to go up here to the Functions folder. And I'm going to grab this package.json uh, um, uh, file. And I'm going to move that out of the way, put it right there. And I'm going to grab this and I'm going to drop it into my code editor here. All right, so now that I'm in here, um, you can see that our engines right here, node is set to 16. We're just going to backspace that, change it to 18, and, uh, and then save it. Okay. 
All right, so we're good to go there. Um, that's taken care of. Uh, so we can get rid of that, close that out, move that back out of the way. And let me close this real quick. Okay, so, um, so we're all connected now. Um, we're communicating. Uh, so really what we can begin doing is, is looking at actually uh, creating and applying um, custom functions to our uh, functions index file um, so that we can deploy it. Uh, now in this tutorial here, I'm not going to go over applying the functions yet, but there is one last step that we need to do before I can stop this tutorial. And that is we, uh, we need to add a line of code to our uh, functions index file. And again, I'm, I'm going to use Notepad++ to do that. Um, so I'm going to bring that back over here. And then I'm going to go into my directory. And I'm going to go to my functions folder and I'm going to grab this index file right here and drag it over into my notepad. And you do want to make sure that this, uh, this line up here is present. It should be present though when the index file is created. So that shouldn't be an issue, but we want to add another, um, uh, another line there just below it. So let me grab that real quick here. Okay. And <clears throat> what that'll do is uh, you have to uh, imply that within your index. Um, so that you can you can make changes uh, to your Firestore. Um, basically, you have to uh, grant admin permissions to be able to make changes um, to your Firestore, and it's also applicable to uh, uh, making changes within your authentication, real-time database, and, and other things like that. So you wanna add that line of code there just underneath your functions, and then you can uh, you just save that. And so now your index file is ready to go. In our index file, we will be adding um, custom functions in here. So, <clears throat> all right. Uh, so again, um, I believe that is it for this tutorial. We should be all set up and ready to go. Um, so in the next one, we will take a look at uh, grabbing some um, custom functions that are pre-made. We're not going to write any in this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to do a deeper dive later on, maybe a paid tutorial, maybe not. I don't know yet. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're just going to get some pre-made functions um, because there are there are quite a few out there. Honestly, there, there's a lot that you can grab hold of and then uh, walk through the process of applying those functions to our file. And, uh, and making necessary changes to them to uh, uh, point towards um, the aspects within our Firebase that we want to update, change, initialize, whatever, whatever we're trying to achieve with the, uh, with the function. Um, and so we'll do that in one, possibly two separate tutorials. And then the last tutorial, um, actually, I'm sorry, there will be another tutorial using the emulator to test it. Uh, and then in the last tutorial, we will um, go over the process of deploying the functions to your Firebase and ensuring that they are working correctly. So, all right, that's it for this. Um, hopefully that wasn't overly confusing. Uh, if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. So just let me know. Um, and as always, just stay tuned. And remember, you can connect with me on Telegram or Discord. Links should be in my bio my channel bio, I think. If they're not, let me know. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. All right. Take care.